Good morning and a very warm welcome to Kegworth Baptist Chirps, especially on the last day of 2023. I cannot believe it's New Year's Eve already. It only seems a few weeks ago I was welcoming you here into the new year. I don't know if you can hear on this recording, but the bells of St Andrews are ringing out for us this morning. Today, Chris Budd will be bringing us his message, but I want to start by sharing the notices for the church. We have the following events at Kegworth Baptist Church this week. Friday mornings, 10 a.m. till 12 is our Oasis Coffee Morning in the hall. Sunday mornings, 10.30 is our worship here in church. Also, Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. is our warm welcome space, which is separate from the service. Come and join us for a cup of tea, a chat, some quiet time or read a book. Everybody is welcome to all of our Kegworth Baptist Church events. Also, if you need to contact us, you can email us at mail at kegworthbaptist.org.uk. So before we hear from Chris, let us sing our first song this morning, Seek Ye First. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Happy New Year to you all, wherever you're watching this. Yes, Happy New Year. Before we look forward, I want to look back, because I think God taught me a lesson on something this year. In November, we were fortunate enough to be able to go to Malaysia. And I read a bit, did a bit of research before we went, and I found out that near where we were going, 
And one of the top attractions is a cable car that goes up a mountain and there's supposed to be good views from the top. Well, we got there and you could see it from miles away. And to me, this is really scary because it looks like it, it's nearly vertical near the top of the mountain. And then if that's not enough, you can see where what I thought was another cable car goes from one peak across a gap to another one. The problem is, I have a massive fear of heights, or more accurately, drops. Usually, when we go places together, I send Elaine up to the top with the camera, and, and I stay at the bottom, you know, thinking like, well, it's not much more fun for Elaine up there if she's worrying about me panicking and whatever. So, you know, I can look at the pictures later. And that actually is causing me a problem. You see, as I go round places and talk to you on a chirp about the Christian faith, more often than not, I mean, I'm talking about faith and trust. So where's mine when it comes to going up mountains in cable cars? I think the word might be hypocrisy. I can't talk to you about it if I haven't got faith and trust, can I? Maybe I've got to deal with it. Years ago, we were in Italy, went up a, a mountain there on a cable car. Now, I thought I'd be clever. I stand near the back, nearest the mountain. I'll be all right, looking at the mountainside, not like out of it. Not looking at the scary drop. Imagine my horror. As this thing starts to go up, I realise it also goes round, it rotates. Sooner or later... I was going to be at the front. Now, I realised, even if I close my eyes, I still know what's out there. Or more to the point, what isn't, like ground. It was sort of a coping strategy, but it wasn't going to work. Let's go to the point, I need to deal with the issue. So that's it, we're on Malaysia, near the cable car, I've got to do it. And we plan to do it the next day. I boldly say, we're going to do it. Even though, like, I don't really want to do it. So the night before, I'm laying in bed, thinking about it. And I thought, I know, I'll pray about it. And I did. Pray for God to help me to have the courage to get on this thing. And, and keep my no nerves calm as we go up. So the next day we went, we bought two tickets, joined the queue, and I was feeling surprisingly relaxed. Eventually it was our turn, and we get in, and it rumbles out to the bottom station. We're on the way up. Well, I was slightly nervous, but nothing like I've been in the past. When we got out at the first part, there's a viewpoint, and I was brilliant. Now, I've got a cunning plan. I was going to say to Elaine, oh, you carry on and do the next bit that goes over to the other mountain peak. I've proved I've, I, I can do it, and that's it. That's enough. I'll go back down now. What I hadn't realised was you can't go down from that point. The only way is to carry on across the gap. Oh, I had to do it. And I did. I was okay. Ish. I don't think I could have coped before. I had some kind of a panic attack, probably. But I did it. We got to the top. And I have to say, the views were amazing. It was worth it. It was worth it for the, for the views at the time. It was worth it. Because now I know I've done it once. It gives me encouragement. That I can do it again. We can go somewhere else and hopefully I've got over it. How did it happen? Because I gave my fear to God and asked him to deal with it. And I took a step of faith, trusting that it would be okay. And it was. I'd have missed out if I hadn't done it, wouldn't I? I would have missed out on the amazing views I would have been left with feelings of, what if? And I'd be no better off than I was before. Here we are, 
at the beginning of 2024. And I want to ask, do you need to give something to God for God to deal with? Do you think you need to take a step of faith and allow God to take you somewhere new? It might be geographically. It could be asking Jesus into your life. Maybe you've been on the edge of that step, not quite asked him into your life. It could be you've been contemplating baptism. It could be this is the year to take the plunge in baptism. It could be something God wants to develop in your ministry. What do you need to take a step of faith with in this coming year? You might say, well, that's all very good. But how do we find out? Where do we start? I think our starting point for the year, I think our starting point for everything, actually, is with, with the wise men, the magi, these characters that came to worship Jesus that we read about in the Bible. Read about them in Matthew chapter 2. If you've got a Bible with you now, you might want to be looking at it and want to go back later. But you have a look at Matthew chapter 2 and think about what I'm going to say. Because it starts with, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And I was thinking, I mean, all the years I've heard that. And I kind of, how did the Magi know to follow the star? So I've been looking into this. And it seems like the theologians, the consensus view is that the Magi were descendants of people who were around, would have heard the prophecies about a Messiah, heard the prophecies of people like Daniel and Isaiah, these prophecies would have been handed down and these wise men would have read this stuff. Okay, they read, they studied, so they knew. That was a little aside, an encouragement for you, because obviously they lived way back in the past. And it might be like, whatever you do, and you may not see any results, but it may be somebody in the future will benefit from what you're doing. So you may be doing whatever you're doing. Don't give up. Keep going. Because somebody will benefit it from it in the future. So the major I studied and they understood scriptures. They were expecting a Messiah, a saviour from God. So we need to read our Bibles and allow God to speak to us through what we read. Be open to what God wants to say. And then they noticed a star. Again, there's a prophecy. It's Numbers chapter 24. It says, I see him, but not now. I behold him, but, but not near. A star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. So for these wise men, they've studied scripture. They know God's going to send a Messiah. And then you see a star, and it's like, this is it. The time is now. And they looked for signs. So that's another clue for us. Studying the Bible, be open to what God wants to say through Scripture, but being open to signs around us, like circumstances that you end up in, to think, what is, is God active in this? Is God trying to say something? Be open to conversations you might have. All these things can be pieces in a jigsaw that will lead you into this journey of faith. So I think we all need to spend time with Jesus to find out where he wants us to go this year. So, the wise men set out on a journey. But they didn't know all the details. And my experience is that when God calls me to do something, he doesn't give me all the details. I don't know the full story. It's taking that first step of faith and allowing God to lead us. 
even though we don't quite know where we're going. Now, we don't like that. I don't like that. Uncertainty. And I think, and you can see it actually people did this in the Bible, the danger is we try and work things out for ourselves and we make assumptions. Because the so-called wise men assumed that if Jesus was going to be a king, he'd be born, where would a king be born? In a palace. Who'd have thought it would be in a stable? Never make assumptions is the lesson. Now, men. Just to go off of one for a minute. Look, between us, the ladies make jokes and have a go at us because we don't ask for directions, do we? Ever. And I have to admit, that is true of me. I just, you know, you don't do it, do you, if you're a man? But we hear a lot about mental health, particularly men and young men. Young men. And I want to say this year, be a wise man if you're struggling, ask for help, ask for directions in life, talk to somebody, don't bottle some something up and just get lost. Anyway, right, back to the story. Right, the wise men came to Jerusalem and they asked, where is the one who's been born king of the Jews? And the passage goes on. When Herod had called together all the people, chiefs, priests, and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least amongst the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be a shepherd to my people Israel. So again, they've found answers in scripture. To, to life's questions. We always need to go back to scripture, see what God is saying, the next part of the journey. So the wise men follow the star and they find Jesus. And we read this, on coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary and they bowed down and worshiped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh and all the ladies were saying oh, why didn't they take something useful like a casserole no, let's not get into that my prayer is that we give the same gifts to Jesus at the start of this year as the wise men gave at that first Christmas gold frankincense and myrrh and you're all thinking what I don't know what these things are. Well, speaking sort of metaphorically, I guess is the word. Like gold, it's something valuable. Giving something of value to Jesus. Actually, I think that's our lives. Gold is associated with royalty. It's about accepting Jesus as being the king of our lives being our ruler. Frankincense. Why did the wise men give that? What was the significance? Well, it relates back to a passage in, uh, I think it was Genesis, where God gives instructions on putting a mixture containing frankincense in front of the Ark of the Covenant. And he says, I will meet you there frankincense this idea that we can actually meet with God what's the word we associate with Jesus at Christmas Emmanuel God with us about accepting Jesus as ruler of our lives about actually meeting with the living Lord Jesus we need to ask Jesus to come into our lives. And then myrrh, well myrrh was a simili similar thing to, uh, to frankincense, but was used differently. Traditionally it was used to embalm a body after death. Wise men brought it 
to signify Jesus' destiny was to die. Why? For the sins of the world, for my sins and for your sins, to clear away the rubbish so that we can have a relationship with Almighty God. Jesus' life as a king was one of service and sacrifice. And I think that's what God is calling each one of us to do in 2024. As part of our worship, of our gratitude for what Jesus has done for us, is to follow his example and serving the people around us, the people of this world, in an attitude of worship, of service and sacrifice. And like me going to the top of the mountain and having an incredible experience, I think if we get those things right, the end of the year, we'll be able to say, wow, what a year. So that's the question. Are you prepared to seek out what God wants you to do? Are you prepared to take a step of faith this year? I hope you are. Thank you for listening. I invite you to join me in a prayer. Lord Jesus, as we go into 2024, I pray that you will give all of us hearts that want to seek you. May we be like the wise men and live lives of worship for who you are, what you do for each one of us giving thanks for your sacrifice of dying to take away our sins. I pray that each one of us will go on a journey that brings us closer to you this year. Amen. of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me.
to follow Jesus For he has said that he will bring me home And day by day I know he will renew me Until I stand with joy before the throne To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus Thank you, Chris, for your message this morning. I think it's important that we all seek out and find what Jesus has in store for us, especially at the start of a new year. In church this morning, we're looking at things that we've been grateful for in 2023 and also things that we would like God to fulfil for us in 2024. Let us all pray and think on those things. For some people, there are many things to be grateful for. For others, it's been a difficult year. But also with the start of a new year brings new hope. Jesus' birth is our hope. And Jesus' resurrection at Easter brings us hope of eternal life. So this year, while we think about everything that may have happened to us, let us consider in our prayers what God has in store for us in 2024. Before we finish, I'd like to bless everybody with the grace. So let us say this together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. And we're going to finish our service this morning with the wonderful traditional hymn, O Jesus, I have promised. I wish you all a very happy, peaceful and healthy 2024.